For the remainder of this video, we'll focus on monosaccharides. When looking at different monosaccharides, as we did with glucose and fructose, we can distinguish monosaccharides based on the type of carbonyl group they have. For molecules like glucose, with an aldehyde, we would refer to these types of monosaccharides as an aldose. If we have a molecule like fructose, which has a ketone in the structure, this type of monosaccharide would be referred to as a ketose. We can also identify monosaccharides based on the number of carbon atoms that are present. If there are three carbons in the structure, this would be referred to as a triose. With four carbons, it would be a tetrose. A five carbon monosaccharide is a pentose. A six carbon monosaccharide is a hexose. And a seven carbon monosaccharide would be a heptose. Glucose, with an aldehyde functional group and six carbons, would be known as an aldohexose. Fructose, with six carbons and a ketone functional group, is identified as a ketohexose. These other two examples, you should be able to identify what types of monosaccharides they are. You should pause the video and identify the type of functional group and the number of carbons, and then write which type of monosaccharides they would be. This first structure has an aldehyde functional group and it has five carbons. This would be classified as an aldopentose. The second structure has a ketone functional group with a total of seven carbon atoms and so this monosaccharide would be a ketoheptose. In previous videos we learned about stereochemistry, and specifically that a carbon atom that has four different groups attached can have an enantiomer and will be optically active. Even the smallest monosaccharide, glyceraldehyde, can have a stereocenter or an asymmetric carbon. The second middle carbon in glyceraldehyde has four different groups attached. Carbohydrates are classified as either D or L based on the bottommost asymmetric carbon in the Fischer projection. If the hydroxyl group is on the right in the Fischer projection, this is classified as a D monosaccharide. If the hydroxyl group on the bottommost asymmetric carbon in the Fischer projection is on the left, we designate that as an L monosaccharide. Almost all sugars found in nature's are D sugars. With larger monosaccharides, there will be more than one asymmetric center. When the hydroxyl groups on these asymmetric centers are on different sides, we can have what are known as epimers. Epimers are diastereomers that differ at only one asymmetric carbon. For example, we've already seen the structure of D-glucose. If we switch the hydroxyl group on the fourth carbon, we would end up with D-galactose, which is known as the C4 epimer of glucose. On the other hand, if we start with D-glucose and switch the hydroxyl group on the second carbon to the opposite side, we would then have D-mannose. D-mannose is referred to as a C2 epimer of D-glucose. Monosaccharides can undergo a variety of different types of reactions. In basic solutions, monosaccharides will react to form mixtures of monosaccharides, so we won't pay too much attention to these kinds of reactions since they're less useful to us. Monosaccharides can also be oxidized or reduced. Reduction of the carbonyl group forms what's known as an alditol, as the carbonyl is reduced to an alcohol. For example, if we have D-fructose, this can be reduced to form both D-glucotol and D-mannitol. D-glucotol 
is a sugar substitute, sometimes known as sorbitol. Aldoses, when they're reduced, will form just one aldotol. However, ketoses will form two aldotols, since when the ketone is reduced, we have an asymmetric carbon that can have the hydroxyl group on either side of the Fischer projection. Oxidation of monosaccharides can be used to distinguish aldoses from ketoses. When an aldose is oxidized, the aldehyde functional group is oxidized to carboxylic acid. However, ketose cannot be oxidized because the ketone is not available to be oxidized.